My name is Misha Dola. I'm professor at King's College London here in London, uh, where I'm heading the Center for Telecom Research, working on 5G. So 5G will in one way continue what we've been doing with 4G, increased data rate, right? So we've gone from 3G to 4G, now it's 5G coming, data rate hopefully will increase, and 4G is delivering a lot of rate already. Um, if you think about it with LTA, we will have about a gigabit per second. Now, if we want to go to 5G, we need to opt this by about another factor of 10. So we're talking about 10 gigabit per second data rate, which is one of the big achievements we hopefully will we'll get with 5G. Another strand is all about connecting more devices. So the Internet of Things, everybody talks about it. We've been trying to connect devices over the past 20 years. Uh, some technologies worked, others didn't. So we hope 5G will deliver that finally and connect billions, if not trillions, of devices to the uh, cellular infrastructure. And the third thing, which we are very excited about it, is all about this critical uh, services. So the ability to essentially deliver data packets with virtually zero delay or perceived zero delay and with an extremely low outage. That's gonna be the third big challenge of the 5G community. So at this point, probably 5G is a little bit shoot in the dark. So we literally struggle a lot to come up with some really good use cases, which would warrant a billion, if not a trillion dollar investment story. But we're not worried about this because we started designing 3G before the internet came along, right? Think about it. That was, you know, the uh, even before the millennium. And then we started to design 4G before the iPhone came along. So you know what, let's do 5G before that next big thing will come along. And maybe in contrast to 4G, we want to do that a little bit better in that we involve these communities in designing 5G. So instead of coming up with the technology and say, uh, world, you know, we have 5G, start to use it, and then everybody's like, okay, let's wait, what's going to be the big use case? What we want to do this time, 2015, 2016, really, get out into the community, the arts community, the medical community you'll see behind me, um, you know, transport community. Let's do this together as a co-design. So by the time in 2020, 2022, that technology is commercially on the market. They know what to do with that. As of today, with the relationship is consumer, operator, vendor, and then the supply chain. Now, we think in 5G that will change, and I've been advocating for, the, for this actually for quite a few years already, in that, you know, 5G will empower industries, and industries are naturally a B2B community, a business-to-business -business community. So the, the industries here in the telco world, which speak B2B, are the vendors. So naturally, vendors have a very natural relationship to uh, the heavy industries, whether that is Skanska or Schlumberger uh, or other companies you probably have never heard of. So it's no surprise that Ericsson would strike a deal with Volvo uh, or with a construction company. So the operators now need to move very quickly to, to strike these type of deals, as otherwise they will end end up in a rather weak role where the vendors will sign in their own equipment for many years in these heavy industries, whether that's construction, oil and gas, uh, transport, etc. And these vendors would then choose the best operator contract. So essentially that relationship will reverse. So it's a good thing because it will give a lot of stability to the community because uh, we will have B2C, the traditional type of relationship, and B2B, maybe the vendors playing a much stronger role. So I don't have a crystal ball, but let's, let's say we continue with the trend. We can see that uh, 5G now will even more atomize the uh, telco industry, right? So things are slowly breaking apart in the sense that the core network is thinning, the uh, access network is heterogeneizing in a sense, there's so many more systems out there. If we are to believe that trend, then maybe there will be no 6G by 2030 because simply it will be such a heterogeneous ecosystem out there that it wouldn't make sense to even standardize that because the system would self-innovate so much quicker than what the standards body could deliver. So 2030, my bet is, uh, heterogeneity has just increased by an order of magnitude. 
maybe there won't be a 6G, maybe there will be a federation, a much bigger federation of systems. Uh, our mobile systems, if they're still around, they will not work with cells, they will work not, not work with a specific operator, they will work on opportunities, so what is the link opportunity, where can I connect to, uh, and we will sort out the billing uh, opportunity on top of that. So that would be one of my crystal gaze type of predictions for 2030.